Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel, guys. Good to see you. How does this footage look? I'm just recording on the backup GoPro Hero 5 Black. That's my backup potato cam. Just interested in just doing this so I can have a look at the footage when I go back up and do the edit. So what am I here to talk about today? 20 stone, overweight, dying. I remember ages ago, there was like a, a, a documentary, I'm not sure if it was on YouTube or TV, with something a similar sort of name that someone did like that, overweight, half dead or something like that it was and it was about this Australian bloke who was getting on a bit and he was he's a bit chubby and he had some illness and some condition that the doctors couldn't help him with you know and he just stuck with this illness and in the end he decided to just take it upon himself to just try something and he went to nutrition to kind of fix his illnesses and he just went on this juicing diet of eating like raw things like you know put apple spinach you know and ginger and just live off these shakes you know these nutritious juiced drinks and bear him around and i think after a few months this, his strange illness has gone you know and he was losing weight and feeling great and the argument was that in all of these foods that he was wasn't cooking and stuff he was just drinking raw he was getting all the micronutrients that your body needs to kind of fuel your immune system and function properly because like nowadays we cook the crap out of everything kill all the sort of micronutrients and fill it up with salts and sugars and fats and it's all processed and our bodies just aren't getting the things we need it was one of those things you watch and it come across to me as one of the truest things i'd ever seen um, and the reason it's relevant to me the stuff just got this annoying little kind of illness or ailment which is nothing all it is is i sniff <laughs> i have like this sniffing and runny eyes that i've had for about the last six months and it's just annoying and i've sp spoken to my gp about it and it's like an allergy he thinks like hyperallergenic that you j just get these allergies a bit like hay fever because i get a bit of eczema sometimes on my skin as well and it sort of comes and goes and he's given me like a sniffer thing, a beckonase or something, sniffer thing, and some hay fever tablets. Um, and also my eyes get infected quite a lot and I have to put like the eye drops in them to clear them out. But on a normal day, if I'm doing something, like literally my eyes will start dripping, like, and it's just really annoying. And I just figured, like the GP doesn't know what's causing it fine you know no problems there but they're not there's no there's no interest it's like if the medication doesn't work you know the basic tablet doesn't fix you that's it you're done with the with the NHS really it's not some anti-NHS thing and I think you do have to t kind of take your health into your own hands and I've been getting kind of healthy over the last six months I do a lot of swimming a little bit of tennis and stuff like that and um, I'm not really losing much weight and I think the jig the missing piece in the jigsaw is my diet now I don't think I can go over to this full juicing kind of thing that you know I just don't I tried it <laughs> it lasted about five minutes last time but I'm gonna start trying to just like once or twice a week just have like some raw vegetables like carrot you know one day the banana apple maybe juice them all together and I bet you when I start doing that and maybe drinking a little bit of water that my eczema will clear up and whatever this sinus thing is allergy thing he said it might be you know it's an allergy to dust you know and it could just be um duck feathers or something in my blankets or whatever but i bet you if i start eating all these raw vegetables it will go <laughs> anyway that is my first thing for the video let me know your thoughts on all of this sort of stuff all these little minor ailments that you get as you start getting older i bet they are down to poor nutrition a lot of the time you know i live off fry ups and mcdonald's and all that sort of stuff but there you go what else is going on guys well let's move over to the 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 um the red peril she was without an mot and she had bald tires so it wasn't drivable so i've barely been driving it i've managed to get enough money together to get the tires done which is great this isn't isn't an advert but on the black friday sales a company called black circles that do all the cheap tires online the kumo tires that i've got here and these are i don't think you can see I haven't detailed them they've just gone on the car they're all dirty guys it's winter as well so people are going to look at them and go oh, your tires are dirty i know most of you won't but someone will <laughs> these are kumo uh, extra p 
S what's it called PS 91s they're a high performance tyre and I've got these four tyres 18 inch um, 320 quid fitted that is a bargain like 20% off on the Black Friday sale um, so that is fantastic phenomenal and uh, the tyres are good as well the alloys haven't been damaged in the fitting and it's all gone great so that's great I'll do a review on these tyres the reason I'm using Kumo's, um, Reg uses them on his 330 and Mark who tracks his his 140 a lot around Goodwood has put them on as well and, and tracked them and these tyres are good. Now they may not be as good as the Michelin Pilot Super Sports or Michelin PS4s um, but they are virtually half the price and the thing is I did one track day on my Michelin Pilot Super Sports and after that track day the tyres, I had my three year warrant, end of warranty done on the car and BMW looked at the tyres and said they need to be changed straight away, the outside edges have gone and it was like a red warning thing, you know, um, although I've got another track day out of them but that's another different story. Um, so it's half the price and I'm interested in what the grip is at the moment, even in these horrible wet conditions where these tyres are supposed to be lousy, they feel very good but they're brand new uh, and all that sort of stuff. They feel great these Kumo tyres. So we'll do a proper review on them. Perhaps when I've done a track day around Goodwood, I'll have something to compare on. So that's the M4, M140. She's just had an MOT, gone through with no problem. That is great. What else is going on, guys? If we come around here, we have all of these, um, we have all these parts for the club sport. So I drove over a curb the other day. <laughs> Drove over a curb and smashed. This is the in, this is the front thing, so that connects to your wheel arch lining, and this bit goes underneath the bumper. And I smacked and cracked and smashed all this, so I went and forked out for a new one. You, if you go and buy a breaker one, it'll all be flimsy and filthy, dirty. So it's nice to get some new plastic, um, and also where the bonnet locked down, you know, and I. I locked, my, locked the bonnet down, I couldn't get it open, so I had to smash it out. I had to rip through the, the grill and then cut all this bit out. So I've gone and got a new front air duct, which is going to be a bit of a pain to fit, but there you go. So that's going to go in. I don't know if you can see that, it looks a bit underexposed, but there. We also have BMW OEM Blue Coolant Concentrate. Um, it's got it's got red it's got red coolant in there so it's been done by a garage or something they just didn't care drain it out stick any old coolant in there but it needs the proper coolant um now i have 501 warning lights on that that bmw 330 club sport and i've been plowing my way through faults and fixing this car and as i fix things things break and something else goes and all that you know i've created more problems here than i'm fixing anyway i have the coolant warning light on my car I changed the coolant sensor didn't fix the problem so after much messing around trying to work out what it is in here this is the coolant reservoir on the 330s and in there you see is the floaty thing which is a stick I think this, you've got the reservoir here floaty thing and then you have a block there and then down here you have a sensor and when that thing there's another just to make it even more complicated there's a plastic runner there I think so it runs so it can't wobble around so it runs up and down that runner and when this thing goes low on so you'll have your coolant level there somewhere when it goes low this will dip down it's got a bit of metal in it and when it gets down to here the sensor can read it and you get your low warning light. I think this bobber thing here has been detached from this stick and this stick has been sort of floating on top of this bobber and this bobber has actually been bouncing around. This might be broken as well. That's what I think it is. Um, these are sealed units. You can get cheap ones from Euro car parts. But with something like this I just figured pay whatever it costs and get a proper proper BMW one that's where the that's where the sensor goes so I'm gonna have to drain down the coolant all of it to put the correct coolant in 
and fit that. And when spring comes, I really look forward to getting that done. Might do it earlier, or else I'm going to have parts kicking around my garage for a long time. So that is the update on the 330. What else did I want to talk to you guys about? Oh yeah, the Golf, the Golf. So the Golf went off to the garage. It was smoking, the engine was smoking. And I thought it was leaking oil out of the turbo. And it was like the turbo connection to the engine. Um, but that was a bad guess, because it was steam, not um, oil. Um, so it was, it was leaking coolant out of uh, a, ha a hose near the turbo and it was falling onto the turbo creating loads of steam and I was losing coolant in fact I knew I was losing coolant I should have put two and two together um, I've had another problem on the so they the garage have fixed that diagnosed and fixed that also that Golf when I drive it when I turn the steering wheel the airbag warning light was coming on and the locks would go click 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 and open then that error would go away the airbag warning light would clear be fine for 10 minutes and I'd be driving along, I'd go around a corner, airbag warning light comes on, goes off, hear the locks go click, 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 click. And it's been doing that for about the last two years. But two years ago when it started doing it, it would do it like once every two months. So you're just like, hmm, that's a bit weird. And then it's just got more and more and more to the point where it was doing it every, you know, it was doing it every five minutes. Click, 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 click. So I thought, right, I've got to get that sorted. Um took it down there and it was click clicking away as I was driving it down there gave it to them they were diagnosing it and on day one they said yeah there's a problem with there's no connection to the main airbag unit from every other component so wherever you know however it's checked maybe the ECU checks the connection to the airbag module and um, they did some diagnostics and they checked all the connections they had all the stuff out in the floor of the car you know where the accelerator pedals are checked all the groundings and all this sort of stuff and they were gonna carry on working on it the next day. Anyway, the next day, the problem wasn't there. And they couldn't replicate the problem. The connection was good and everything was good. And um, so I left them the car and basically they were gonna just keep trying to drive the car every now and then see if the fault would come back because I had a curtsy car. And about a week later, in the end, we've given up and they just can't replicate the problem. And I've gone to pick up the car um, you know and they've only charged me for the initial diagnostics and the and the coolant thing so they've been really good the garage actually quite impressed with them because it's a tricky problem they've given me the car back and i've driven it back home and the airbag error has gone completely and i've never driven it. i've driven it for about two hours today and i've never driven it for this long without that airbag warning light coming up so it may well have been fixed touch wood i hope that's fixed because what the garage was saying is if it comes back, the next port call was actually to replace the airbag control module, which is about 590 quid. Um, so if that if it ever does come back, then it might be time to chip the car in or something like that, get rid of it, because it's too much to p spend on a car that's only worth three or 4,000 pounds, isn't it? But it's a great, reliable car, so I'm really, you know, apart from these niggles, this is the first niggles I've had with it, really, so I'd rather keep the car. Um, especially at this time of the year what else is going on everything comes at once at winter my boiler packed in um so that's no you know no hot water <laughs> and no hot air um it's an air system in there and the the immersion heater backup in the tank is also you go to use that when the main one breaks and you discover that's busted as well um Luckily, we found a really good place that came in immediately and the guy diagnosed it. It's a dry connection fault on a circuit board. And as soon as you press the wires, you touch them with your hand, it, it, this clicking noise stops and the boiler works perfectly. So um, I cable tied the cable up tight against the machine and it's working perfectly since, but they are coming back next week to replace the circuit board and fix the immersion heater you can't mess around with things like that you need it working properly so that's going to be another 500 odd quid or something like that god knows whatever it is but they're worth every penny these tradesmen they you know you're not just paying for their time you can always break everything down and think oh he's only here for two hours i've got to give him like 500 quid you're paying for their expertise and it's like it's when someone comes if someone comes and does some work on my car and you think they're only here for two hours, I'm giving them like 150 quid or something like that. You're paying for their expertise and you're paying them a rate so that their business can survive and stuff like that. So you should always 
sort of unless you're getting ripped off obviously but if you're getting good service from these companies and and the parts as well that i've got to pay things cost money don't they so um i'm sort of telling myself this more than telling you this because i think you know this you guys know this already i'm a bit of a tight ass but sometimes in life doesn't it you go through stages where it just feels like you're shelling out every other day shelling out money and money and it's like oh god um, and it's very hard sometimes to try and actually save money where you got so you can actually spend it on yourself. So I've had all these things to do on the cars, which are luxury items. I think you're saying, but also had all these thoughts. You know, the Golf is not a luxury item. That's a the family car that we need running all the time. So um, anyway, I'm back on track, and because the Golf didn't cost me too much money, I've got I had about an extra two hundred quid over this month. So that's allowed me to get the parts for the the club sport as well um so it's all good that's it guys so christmas is coming i'm in a good mood everything's going well i've got to get a few videos done before christmas um and i'll talk more about those later i'm going to shut this gopro down this is a little informal update for the backup channel and um i'll see you guys soon take care if you've not already done so subscribe to forensics unplugged this is the backup channel if you're new to this thing the main channel is called forensics detailing thanks for watching see you soon